what's going on guys welcome back to this video today's video will be hack the box video and we're carrying over with the track that we have started the la in the last week the track was intro to printer exploitation and today's machine will be antique so in antique what we are going to do we're going to reveal uh, a plain text password that is stored in a vulnerable printer so basically the printer stored the password in plain text so we'll be able to uncover this password using the SNMP or an SMB exploit simple network management protocol this will enable us to have access through telnet a telnet shell technically we will convert the telnet shell into metasploit and later on we will gonna ex we're gonna exploit another printing prot printing protocol called cups or cups we call it cups okay so we click on the machine okay so the machine ip is spawned make sure to spawn the machine and let's get started so the first thing as you can see uh, start in map scan i'm gonna leave this to you guys now the next thing that we're going to do we will discover after the map scan that the port 161 is open udb scan or udb port is open so basically udb port 161 uh, it is for the simple network management protocol so basically if we go to let me show you SNMP here no not this one I think it's gonna be in printer exploitation so SNMP okay so basically it's the simple network management protocol and if the port assigned to this protocol is running and open Okay, you're going to be able to interact with all the network devices, including the printers. Okay, so if we do port 161 is open, it means if there is a printer, we can interact with the printer. So how do we interact with a device using the simple network management protocol? We use the tool SNMP walk. Given that we know the community string, community string is required to interact with the devices or audit them. So sometimes the community string is left as the default value which is public now sometimes it's public and some other times it might be internal but all the time when we do pen testing using the simple network management protocol we start with the public as a community string so it's a way to interact with the device using the simple network management protocol so we try to interact with the printer that's used for the version and as with this command as you can see we get a banner that this is an HTTP printer the starter of the printer okay so there is an old exploit that enables us to not only grab a banner of the printer when the SNMP uh, port is open but also to reveal any stored plain text passwords so In the next command here, as you can see, we use the exact same command as before, but we add this string. So basically, I'm going to put the source uh, of this method in the video description. So when we do that, when we execute this command, we are actually exploiting an old vulnerability in uh, the, the, the printers when the uh, SNMB uh, protocol is running. So through the SNMP protocol, we'll be able to exploit this printer and reveal any plain text passwords. So it turned out that the printer itself is storing plain text passwords, or the administration password is stored as plain text. How do we know that? As you can see, this is a hexadecimal value. So since the printer returned an hexadecimal value as a response to this fuzzing, we took this hexadecimal value and we run to cyber chef as you can see here from hex auto and we'll be able to reveal the password this is a plain text password now where do we use this password we can use this password some other uh, in in some other places but to get back to the basic idea here guys so remember that the let me uh, cancel the map scan since you're gonna do it on your own and let me show you guys here something so if we run On port 161 
this is the UDB. It's, it's, it's a UDB port, by the way. Okay. So it's now telling, it's now saying that it's closed. As you can see, uh, it is corresponding to SNMP. So if we have this open during a pen testing, okay, and we are required to pen test a printer, the first thing we're going to do is to try to talk with the printer with SNMP walk. And then if we know the version of the printer, the model, okay, we'll be able to establish a methodology on how to go further. But since here we don't know, we're going to assume that the printer is outdated or it might have some uh, vulnerability or misconfiguration. So we're going to try our luck using an exploit with SNMP walk. And in this case, it works. Sometimes it might not work depending on the version of the printer. So basically, this exploit works only on these models. So the printer must be, uh, the, the model of the printer must correspond to one or must match to one of these three models. HP Jet Direct, and you have the models here. These are vulnerable printers to this method. And again, if you're asking me, I'm going to put the source in the video description. So guys, I don't want anyone to tell me, how did you know? How did you come up with this? So basically, I'm going to put everything in the video description. All right. Next thing that we did from the NMAP scan, we knew that Telnet port is open. So we tried to Telnet with a machine. And here, as you can see from the banner, it says HP Jet Direct. Now, your first method or your first step after the AMAP scan could be either to interact through the telnet or to interact through the SNMP walk. Now if you tried or if you start with telnet you will be able to grab the model of the printer beforehand. So you will have an idea on how to proceed further and the method or the step of using SNMP walk with this exploit will make sense to you because this applies only to HP Jet uh, direct models. So here, since we know the password, we supply the password and we get a shell through Telnet. As you can see, we see this one or this statement. Please type question mark for help. So we type the question mark and we see here information or help guide on how to configure the printer. So as you can see here, guys, this printer can be interacted with or can be managed through Telnet. That's one of the methods to manage this printer. Interesting. And lastly, we see this execute, execute system command. So based on the suggestion, we indeed executed this command and we received the ID of the current user, which is, as you can see, LP, LP. The group is, it belongs to LP and LP admin. Now, of course, Telnet is not a stable shell if you want to go further and take root of the machine. So what we're going to do, we need to convert the Telnet shell into a more manageable, meaningful shell. There are several methods. No single method is the absolute exclusive method that works. So what I did here, I chose to work with Metasploit. So I launched the MSF console and I used the web delivery module to deliver a reverse shell. Use multi-script web delivery. Now the options required here are the S, the server host, and the L host. You can leave the port as is. Now, the server host and L host is the IP address of your machine. If you are connected to Hack the Box through Hack the Box VPN, you're going to grab your um, interface IP address. Okay. So going back here, so we specify the required parameters. And as you can see, Metasploit gives us a Python reverse shell that we ex if we executed or if we execute on the target machine, Metasploit will be able to grab the connection on port 44. Four, four it is a default port Metasploit uses. We don't need to change it because we are not doing, we're not dealing with a real uh, world scenario here. If you're dealing with a real world scenario, change the L port because Metasploit ports, most of them are highlighted and flagged by firewalls and antiviruses. You can change the L port here if you want. So 
this is the reversal so what we're going to do we're going to feed that command to telnet since we are able to execute commands using the exec command we'll be able to use this and execute it so first i tried by copying the command as is but it didn't work so then i try with python 3 and then only then i was able to receive the interpreter session so there you go guys we got the first foothold on the machine or on the main machine hosting the printer using um, this method or using metasploit there is another method uh, which does not involve metasploit so basically you're going to again do all the steps that we took uh, at the very start at the very beginning and then when you arrive at this point when you execute the command you can execute netcat reversal you can execute batch reversal and instead of retrieving a metaprinter meta session you're going to retrieve a normal shell okay that's the, the difference all right the next step is to conduct privilege escalation okay so let's scroll down so i dropped the shell using the shell command and here i called the current working directory i am under var spool lpd so i then i cd to the home directory of lp to grab the user flag this is the user flag okay then we drop to shell as you can see yeah we drop to shell here and we examine the user id we stabilize the shell and next we proceed to the privileged escalation now to conduct privileged escalation again i all say that all the time in all the videos you have to enumerate okay and now every scenario is different in this scenario we enumerated while we enumerating we were enumerating the network connections we discovered that the machine is listening on port 631 locally as you can see there's no foreign address and it's local which means we, that we cannot interact with this port um, from my machine without establishing a tunnel so there you go here we have to conduct what is called as pivoting or lateral movement so we have to laterally move inside the network so we have to laterally guys interact with this port but we cannot do that from my machine so to be able to interact with ports that are open locally inside the network you have to do pivoting or you have to uh yeah we have to do pivoting through something called the tunneling now tunnels are best created using ssh ssh port forwarding but here we don't have ssh credentials so we're gonna have to use other method now if you decided to go with metasploit method through metasploit there is a way to port forward okay now if you go to metasploit notes and search for port forward now with this command while on metasploit you'll be able to forward the connections coming to a port open on my machine and forward them to this port so for example what i did here let's scroll down this is the command so port forward add we add a root dash l7000 7000 represents or the port designated with the dash l option is the port that will be open on my machine okay the attacker machine dash p 631 this is the port that i want to interact with which is the port open locally on the printer dash r localhost so what happens here when i hit the port 7000 okay on or using my machine it will do or it will forward the connections coming to this port directly to into 631 so once i established the tunnel here what I i'm going to do i'm going to go back to the browser and interact with this port but i'm not going to type 631 remember that we forwarded all the incoming connections coming to port 7000 to 631 the port open in my machine is this one so in my local machine i put this port in the browser and i navigate and i will be able to see as you can see here the web page this is the web page of cups it's the standard based open source printing system developed by apple so it's a protocol developed by apple and it was vulnerable to you know security attacks so there is as you can see we have the version mentioned here six or one six one 
if we try to grab this version or search for an exploit exploit as you can see we have root file read root file is exploit released for this vulnerable version of cups and long story short it lets you read all files you want on the target system our target here is to read the root file system luckily for us this exploit was well integrated with metasploit so what we have to do we go back to metasploit we background the current session and we search for the exploit so search cups type exploit we see this one it's uh, an exploit but I lately realized that I am doing post compromise. I compromise the machine. I want to do post compromise activities, which is privilege escalation. So I changed the search query from this to this. So the only difference here is that instead of searching for an exploit, I am searching for post post compromise uh, items here. So as you can see, we have this one: post, multi, escalate, cups, root file, the exact one or the exact exploit. Uh, dedicated or released for this version so we go back here to my machine and yep so we decide to use this so we use show options we see what are the required options okay the required options are the first one is the session ID now you can reveal all the sessions that you have opened in Metasploit using sessions I command so sessions I command reveals all the current sessions I have open in the machine or the active sessions the idea of the session is one so we scroll down now we know the session ID next the file this is the file to steal or the file we want to read it is by default set to etc shadow because it's the most important file on any system it stores the hashes of all the configured users on the on the Linux system if you are able to grab this file you can run John the Ripper hashcat and crack all the hashes and then log into the system as root or any user you want but since it's a city of scenario we're going to save the time and hassle and reconfigure this to the root.txt file you can leave this as is once we set this we run and the exploit will grab the file and store it under this path we go to this path and we reveal the flag so that is the machine guys in a nutshell so this was another printer exploitation um, uh, video and as you can see guys printer cannot or can be exploited not only using the uh, not only not only through the browser by trying to re brute force the password or running some commands you can also brute force or exploit the printers through other protocols like Tenlet and SNMP, depending on the current, of course, depending on the Nmap scan. Nmap scan decides everything on your printers. That's why we, we first do it. It comes before all the uh, progress. So, now you might be asking me, what is another method of doing if I don't want to use Metasploit, if you're preparing for OSCP, right? If you don't want to use Metasploit, for port forwarding let's go back here so say that we are, you are on here you want to establish a reversal but not with metasploit so what we're going to do we're going to use a netcat reversal or bash reversal i advise with netcat reversal so basically if you go to reversals you have the notes if you are subscribed so rm mki yeah no Let's see the reversal that we have. So we're looking for netcat reversal. Let's search for this. Yeah, you can use this one. Of course, change the IP to your current IP address and the port you want. Take this and execute it here. Okay. You're going to receive the first reversal. What about the port forwarding? How are you going to port forward if you don't have active business credentials and you don't want Metasploit? You need to use Metasploit. So what you're going to do, you're going to use a tool called Chisel. So Chisel, let's see in port forwarding. 
you can download guys chisel from uh, this link I'm gonna put it in the description and then you can what you're going to do we're going to execute chisel on your machine and the attacker machine uh, on the victim machine or the target machine the first thing we execute this command on my machine or on your machine you have first to install chisel chisel server dash p this is the port you choose and dash dash reverse and then we're going to execute this on the client machine or the target machine we specify client okay and here we put the IP address of my machine and the port I chose in the first step when I first created the server R for the remote forward the local machine IP at the machine and this is the port that it, that it will be um, uh, why I put 8001 here I think it's gonna be different because the port open on the machine was 631 so maybe I have to correct this okay so it's gonna be the same port as you used when you first launched the chisel as server and then R and here it's gonna be uh, wait it's gonna be we're gonna have to correct this so 2211 exactly and then we're going to say localhost and then 631 631 happens to be the port that we want to forward to once you execute this on your machine and this on the target machine then you will be able to browse to the uh, cup space and then what you have to do execute uh, through the shell that you got th uh, through netcut you're gonna continue as gonna use the exploit and read the root file system read the root flag so guys, that was it. I hope you liked the video and I will see you later.